Hello everyone, it's your lovely Abby Dagren, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, lovelies. Today I'll be speaking on the natal chart series, and today I'll be doing a natal chart analysis slash reading on Jack Harlow. I'll be speaking on his characteristic traits as well as his personality traits. I'll be also speaking on how a lot of his placements have really helped his success. So please stay tuned for the rest of my video, lovelies. If you have not yet become a part of the Abby Dagren family, then this is your calling to do so. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when I upload videos on the daily. Also hit that like button because I know you guys will love this video. Also share this video with all your friends, your family members, your enemies, anyone in general who you know who would really love this video or this content, really like Jack Harlow, and would really love this. Jack Harlow was born on March 13, 1998, so this qualifies him to be a Pisces. Having this placement makes him very compassionate, so he has compassion for people or animals or anyone around him. He's very romantic, so he loves to do things for his partners that are very fun and interesting. He's very artistic, and this makes a lot of sense because he is a musician, he does a lot of music. He is intensely empathetic, so he's able to understand someone's pain and understand what they're going through. He's also very sensitive, and he just knows how to read people and understand people. Being intuitive is something that he truly is. He's very a dreamy person, and he loves to express himself through creative endeavors. So with these attributes, I really do believe that he really exemplifies and really represents Pisces in a great way. Next up would be his moon in Virgo, and with this placement, he tends to be a person that loves to be organized. He wants to make sure that everything is done perfectly. He's very professional and very career oriented. He has great decision making skills as well. He's very intellectual. He loves to improve his health. He is also a person that loves to do a lot of calculations. He is a person that loves to see the reason before or behind anything. He likes to hide in his sense of purpose and the need to do something productive. So he loves to do things that are practical, very reliable person. He's very grounded. He's very realistic. He's a perfectionist. He's very anxious. He's very self-critical and he's often at times maybe insecure. However, it's a great an interesting placement when someone has a sun in Pisces and a moon in Virgo or sun in Virgo or in a moon in Pisces. They tend to say people with these placements are very great people and they have a great soul and it's hard for them to say no. So this at times can be a very hard placement because they're more than likely the type of people who get taken advantage of and they just love to be nice towards everyone. Next up is his Mercury in Aries, and with this placement, he does not have any time to waste in getting to the point, and he's the person that won't really care about the consequences that come with that, so he's very vocal, so with this placement, you're going to know how he truly feels on anything, he's very direct, and he's not going to beat around the bush so this is a great placement to be around or to have because you're going to know how he feels and you're not going to have to guess how he feels or get to go through other avenues to find out he's going to let you know straight up and he's also a person that's very energetic and he loves to be who he is he may at times be restless and distracted but he is very patient and patience even though it's not that much patience, but he has some patience that can really help a lot. Next up is his Venus in Aquarius, and with this placement, he uses his intellectual prowess to show off for a significant other. So he's a person that's going to make sure that he shows off intellect in order for him to get in a relationship. He also wants in a relationship a friendship 
we just so happened to get married, but we were friends before being married. He wants common goals, so they have the same goals as he does. He wants a lot of freedom, and that's a vibe, and that's a trait that comes with Aquarius, having freedom. Individuality is something that he wants in himself and in his partner. He wants to be respected for that and seen for that. He wants a lot of excitement. He doesn't want a boring relationship or a boring relationship. And this comes for every Venus Aquarius. They want to have fun in their relationship. So these are the traits of him in a relationship and what he wants. Next up would be his Mars and Aries. And with this placement, it's a great placement because Aries is ruled and exalted in Mars. But he tends to be the type of person that will act quick. And he may forge ahead when starting something new. So he's going to react quickly to a certain situation. And even though it's bad in some ways and good in some ways, the bad ways, you know, he may react to something without thinking, but at the same time or get angry at something. However, the anger goes away very quick. But at times... Reacting to something quickly could really not only save his life, but can also help him in his career. So having this placement isn't bad. It's very great, and he has a pioneering drive. He's going to make sure that he accomplishes his goal, and he's not going to let anything prohibit that. So that's a great placement to have. Next up would be his Jupiter. And this is a good placement because Jupiter does rule Pisces as well as Sagittarius. And with this placement, it is his moral code to include helping those who are less fortunate. So helping people who aren't on the same level as him financially or opportunity wise, he's going to make sure that he helps. He is the best when he gives off himself and what he has that's when he feels happy giving to people and making sure they're happy he needs to try to avoid being taken advantage of though he may be an idealist but he must learn not to upset when life does not cooperate with the way he thinks it should be he's very concerned with spiritual truth and growth and he may practice what he preach and make an excellent role model for others. So this is a great placement that he has and I really do feel like he represents this placement. Next up is his Saturn in Aries and with this placement he tends to be more rational and thoughtful and this can be used to his advantage. Being more rational is very helpful because rationality can really help in society. And being thoughtful is also great because being thoughtful of others and yourself can be a benefit to you and it can really help a lot. He has a lot of diligence in himself so he's going to make sure that he accomplishes all of his dreams regardless of what goes on around him. And that's something that comes with Aries vibes because they're going to keep working or they're going to keep doing whatever they're going to do and never stop until they accomplish that goal and having modesty is something that comes with a specific placement because they know what to do and when to do it and even though at times they may have a little stubbornness or selfishness his modesty and diligence really do overcome that Next up is his Uranus in Aquarius, and this is a great placement because Uranus is ruled by Aquarius, and with this placement, he tends to be the type of person that loves to take up social causes and finds ways of solving complex issues, such as poverty and injustice, and this is something that he does a lot because I do see him on social media talking about things that a lot of other people or celebrities would not talk about he wants to make sure that he is a reformer at heart and he wants to make a positive change in society that will not only benefit him but society as a whole he is willing to devote his time and energy to see that they come about especially if the proper group support and combined purpose of will can be found and this is something that he really does exemplify next up is his neptune in aquarius and this makes him have a stellium in aquarius now with this placement 
He also is going to have the reformer type of vibe. He's going to be able to find inspiration wherever he goes. And he's always thinking of ways to help society. So this also continues the vibe of the Uranus and Aquarius. And this is something that is great because people who have this placement tend to always improve society. And they are very interested in learning how to do that. They are the type of people that will be able to to get recognition from generations after them because they know that anything that they create or anything that they champion or any cause that they talk about is going to help the future and they make sure they're a part of that and this is a very great placement to have as well next up is his pluto and sagittarius and this makes sense because he is born between 1995 and 2008, which is Generation Z. And the things that they want is freedom, experimenting different things, exploring different things, and taking risks. They have a lot of optimism and they have the thrill of living and possibilities. They are also the type of people that are always on the search to add wealth to their knowledge and for their enjoyment. They really do love to learn and they love to be the type of people that change society in a positive way and just make sure that everyone has the freedom that they need. Everyone is happy. Having this placement also makes him always reinvent himself and this can be interesting and this can be hard, but a lot of people in this generation are able to do that and they benefit from that. Next is his North Node in Virgo. And in order for him to develop his hidden gifts and talents, he will need to develop the attributes of participation, bringing order to chaos, creating routines, focusing on the here and now, acting on feelings of compassion, being of service to others, analyzing and characterizing, gaining self-confidence through experience, moderation, taking risk in spite of fear, noticing and valuing details, accepting the reality of daily life, learning the way of the healer, helping others heal their pain and in turn heal your own, Connecting to his inner perfection, pursuing life with clarity, learn to be modest, practical, and precise. Your talent is to make sense out of the chaos for himself and for others. So this is what he will need to attribute in order for him to get the gifts needed. Next up is his Chiron in Scorpio. And with this placement, he may have a great fear of passing away. And probably because he may have had experiences before him with someone in their family or a loved one passing away that's something that may really affect him he may also have the wound of feeling like people will betray him probably because he's seen other people get betrayed or he himself got betrayed so these are the wounds that he has in order for him to heal it he will need to know that it's okay to know that not everyone will hurt him. Not everyone will do anything bad to him. And it's okay for him to be able to look at people and know that not everyone is the same. And try his best to know that in those situations, he was not at fault. Next up would be his rising slash ascended in Gemini. With this placement, he loves to learn a lot. He may be restless and appears impatient at times. He has a talent with words. He has a bubbly side and a cool intellectual side as well. He appears very witty and charming. He may at times have a short attention span. He mimics others' personality traits or style. He doesn't like schedule, he kind of likes to go with the flow. He may be gifted with hands. He's a very social butterfly and that is something that he really is. He's very sociable, he's very clever, he's very knowledgeable, he's very versatile and that makes sense because it is a mutable sign. So that's something that he's usually going to be. He's very, very logical, he's very trendy, at times he may be two-faced. But he is a great person and he's very talkative. Last but not least is his midheaven in Pisces. 
And this is a very interesting midheaven. With this midheaven, he tends to be in an occupation or go into something that is very spiritual, is very out of this world. So he may make his own occupation, but he is very artistic. So it makes sense why he's in the occupation that he's in because he does have healing qualities with music. Music does heal a lot. So him getting into the music industry is great because a lot of music, especially people who do have Pisces placement, do love to help with music. He tends to be very supernatural, very seductive. That's his public image. He tends to be impossibly to truly know. He is very mysterious, he's very artistic, and he's very benevolent. So this really does describe him a lot. That's all I have for you lovelies today in regards to Jack Harlow's natal chart. Please let me know in the comment section how you felt about it. Did you learn more about him? Did you get a better understanding as to who he is as a person? Please let me know all of this down below and let me know who else you'd want me to do a natal chart analysis on. Please hit that like button and share this video with all your friends. Also hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well. And if you have not yet followed me on all my social media accounts and this is your time to do so, please make sure you follow me on Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit under Abby Dagren and under Snapchat Abby Dagren 88 Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I love you guys all from the bottom of my heart. Please know that you're loved and appreciated and know that everything will happen for a reason. And I'm just very honored to know you guys. Bye lovelies.